You're watching the local origination channel, Channel 7. The following is a rebroadcast of our third Sunday cinema show, originally seen on January the 29th of 1981. On it, Scott Hedrick talks about a dreamlike movie he made in high school called Graveyard. And I talked to Jeff Link about his black and white videotape entitled The Boogeyman. We hope you'll enjoy this Sunday cinema. Hi, I'm Randy Reeve. Hi, I'm Scott Ettrick. Welcome to another week of Someday Cinema. So far, you've seen some good and bad quality Super 8 films, both in color and black and white. You've seen some very good slide presentations, which had a high grip on originality. You've also seen two productions done on three-quarter inch videotape, one as a remote and one in a studio. You've also seen the use of a film process called pixelation, which causes live actors to look animated. This week's show, we're going to show you two different types of films. One is a videotape made by an Independence resident in his own home using a simple black and white video camera that he attached to his home video recorder. Randy will show you that videotape later and talk with the young man responsible for that production. The film we're going to take a look at now is a Super 8 film that I made about seven years ago. This film is unique for a couple of reasons. The first thing that was unusual about it, for me anyway, was the origin of the idea. The idea came from a song by Pink Floyd, 20 minutes long, entitled Echoes. As I listened to that song and laying in my room about 1973, I envisioned a dreamlike chase sequence through a wooded area. The camera I had at the time did not have the capability of shooting at a high speed, which would give me a slow motion effect, but the projector I had had the capability of projecting at half the normal speed, or 9 frames per second. So I decided to shoot the film in normal motion and, although inconvenient, sit by the projector whenever I showed it to anyone and manually slow it down whenever the dream sequence came up. So the film was to be centered around this dream sequence, but I still needed a storyline. Well, if you've ever made silent films, you know that it's very difficult to develop much of a plot. Consequently, most beginner's films are usually slapstick comedy or high action and violence films because everyone understands these elements without the spoken word. Well, at any rate, I decided to steal my storyline from a film that I saw in high school called Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. Simply put, a person's imagination is capable of dreaming up an entire sequence of events that never happened within a span of seconds. Such is the case with the man in this film, who is standing over a grave when an innocent person drives up to pay his respects, and the first man begins to imagine what we're about to see. Graveyard. We attempted as much as possible to make it look, look dreamy. Uh, as this particular scene here was achieved by back up a little bit what we did was we shot it once from a low angle under his jump then we shot it again as you see here in edit right there we shot it again from far away and we edited it at the point of his jump. And you'll see that we did the same thing with my jump. Again, cut to the edit there, cut to the low angle shot of me jumping over the camera. And then edit to the shot that we did far away from the camera, matching, matching action. In almost all of the shots, you'll see us run into frame and then run out of frame. It's much easier to, to edit that way. Now, this is an interesting point. These woods that you've seen us run up to, run up through, and until this point, were the woods in Mill Creek Park. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that area. Uh, this is all at Mill Creek Park. Then we went to woods that were behind the Lipton Tea Company, uh, and no one usually recognizes the fact that it's a different wooded area. But it was shot in a different wooded area and on a different day. You might be able to tell the difference in density of the trees is about, about the only way. But again, we run into the frame and run out of the frame. Now this. We asked the cameraman to follow our action, follow Mark down, and then back up to me. Actually, 
actually if action would have gone as normal I would have been right behind him there but I ran up to the point of the hill and it allowed Mark to get down to the bottom of the hill and then started running as Frank the cameraman started panning back up to me so it would look natural. Now at this point we needed to get a little distance between Mark and myself and 